Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. Members of the LGBT community have shot and killed public school students because they hated Christians and President Trump. We interviewed Dr. Rob Shank about gun control. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray the news with us? Here's our first story. Members of the LGBT community, including an 18-year-old homosexual and 16-year-old transgender, have shot and killed their fellow classmates at Highlands Ranch STEM School in Colorado. What was their motive? Examination of their Facebook page say that they hated Christians and President Trump. Newsmax reports that two Colorado high school students used at least two handguns to attack their fellow charter school classmates. At the school they attended, killing one of their classmates, a Christian hero who dodged uh, in front of the gunfire to save his fellow students and wounding eight others in an assault near the old Columbine High School where school violence happened so many years ago. Douglas County Sheriff officials said that 18 year old Devin Erickson, who was reportedly openly homosexual and a 16 year old juvenile who was reportedly transgender, a little girl trying to become a man. They both walked into the STEM school in Highlands Ranch through an entrance without metal detectors and they carried at least two handguns and then opened fire in the two classrooms against their classmates. Within minutes, deputies at the nearby Sheriff's Department substation entered the school and arrested the two suspects without exchanging gunfire. One of the suspects was detained by the school's security guard, a former Marine, who ran and confronted one of the armed students in the hallway. And the guard drew his weapon and apprehended that person. Meanwhile, Sheriff Tony Spurlock tells reporters that the suspects had a number of weapons, including two handguns, that they were not themselves old enough to buy or own. Denver TV station KMGH reported that the juvenile suspect, the 16 year old, is a transgendered male, in other words, a girl who wants to be a man. And that student was killed, <clears throat> by the way, that student uh, killed another student, 18 year old Kendrick Castillo, the hero of the story. One of his classmates said, well, yeah, Kendrick Castillo, Castillo was in her British literature cat class when Erickson came in late and pulled out a gun and started shooting. For Castillo, a young Christian man lunged at the gunman who shot the teen. Castillo's actions, heroic actions, giving his life to protect the rest of the class gave some of them time to get under the desks. Others attempt to run to safety, gave them time. And Castillo, the hero's former employer said that he was a funny and empathetic person who loved others and was a part-time employee at Bacara USA. His employer said, quote, to find out that he went down as a hero, I'm not surprised. That's exactly who Kendrick Castillo was, end quote. While the motivation behind the attack remains unknown, according to heavy.com, we know the motives because we've done a little more research. Erickson was an open leftist who despised Christians and opposed President Donald Trump. And Erickson, the murderer, the 18 year old, wrote on his Facebook page two years ago, quote, you know what I hate? All these Christians who hate gays. Yet in the Bible, it says in Deuteronomy 17, if someone doesn't do what their priest tells them to do, well, they're supposed to die. It is, the Bible has plenty of crazy stuff like that, he says, but all the way they get out of it, the Christians is, ew, gays, end quote. 
He also shared a video of comedian Seth Meyers attacking Donald Trump and another post praising Barack Obama. The shooter, a left-wing Democrat, appeared to be into goth and grunge aesthetic, writing the following, quote, I'm covered in ink and addicted to pain, end quote. The STEM school, by the way, is a public charter school with a focus on science, technology, engineering, and math. It has more than 1,850 students in kindergarten through 12th grade, and all eight other students who were injured but not killed in the shooting have now been released from the hospital. And that's the news, or thanks to Newsmax for that report. Again, uh, we're just reading the news report. All of these are alleged crimes. We're gonna give them the benefit of the doubt having yet been to be tried in a court of law. Maybe they're innocent. Maybe they didn't do any of this. But if they did, then what were their motives? Well, you can discern the spirits behind the students. You know, in this story, we have human actors, right? Two gay kids shoot a bunch of Christian kids. And what was their motive? Those are the human actors, but where is the spirit of God in this? Where is the demonic spirit of evil in this? I think it's pretty much self-explanatory, but when their motive is to kill others for being good, when they hate the Christians, because those Christians are so hateful, well, the Christians turn the other cheek. The Christians lay down their life. We discern the spirit of God on Kendrick Castillo, who gave his life the way that Jesus would, laying down his life to protect his fellow man. And that's the message of love that we see in the Bible, right? The Bible says this in 1 John 3, For this is the message you heard from the beginning that we should love one another. Not as Cain who was of the wicked one or you know, Cain the murderer was of the devil and murdered his brother. And what was the motive for that murder? Why did he murder him? Because his works were evil and his brothers were righteous. Sometimes that's all the motive that you need because you're full of evil and the wicked one. Meanwhile, the heroes are full of righteousness and you want them dead. Let's pray about this, would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we do pray in Jesus' name for an end to the violence, not only in Colorado and public schools, but Father, throughout America, that those members of the violent LGBT leftist movement who want to kill Christians because they hate the haters, Father, we pray that they would repent of their own hatred and that they would stop the innocent slaughter of martyrs like Kendrick Castillo, who gave his life for his brothers and sisters. Greater love, Father, has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. And Father, we praise you that you will receive Kendrick into your loving arms and forgive the sins even of those who did him harm. We pray this blessing on America in Jesus' name, amen. We'll take a short break. When we come back, Dr. Rob Shank talks about gun control. Dr. Chaps will be right back with more PIJN News. Reading today's headlines, doesn't it seem sometimes like the world is unreal? We hear about rumors of wars and we see legislative and cultural battles here in America. But where is our hope? I think it's in the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're offering now a a DVD series led by family ministry leader Vince Dacchioli, Real Christianity in an unreal world. It behooves us to really understand what does it mean to be relevant as a Christian and to be real and to spread the gospel in a way to where more and more people will be in, will embrace it and move yep. in the right direction. We can send you the entire DVD series, which is three-part teaching with Vince and a bonus of my personal testimony for a suggested donation of just $30 if you call now at 866-Obey-God or Write to the address on your screen or visit PrayInJesusName.org. We want to rush you this important teaching to ground your faith in real Christianity. I'm Dr. Chaps. You know, some people are worried that we're losing our country, but they ask, how can we take a stand? We have produced now these two effective resources for you, a DVD video series and a book. Yours for a suggested donation of just $50, and we will offer you four videos on this disc to teach you how to become an effective Christian activist. For example, how did I send five million petitions to Congress? How did we organize and change bad laws or policies in 13 states? How did I run and win a seat in the Colorado legislature? We will also offer you this 
30-day prayer manual, How to Liberate the World in 30 Days. They're both yours for a suggested donation of just $50. Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org, or write to the address on your screen, or better yet, pick up the phone and call us at 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. You can learn the easy steps to take back your country. Call us today. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. Welcome back. We're joined now by Dr. Robert Shank, who is a longtime friend and hero to the cause of Christ in my eyes, particularly when he stood with me to pray in Jesus' name as a Navy chaplain and help me get national policies and laws changed to restore religious liberty. Welcome to the program, Dr. Robert Shank. How are you, sir? Thank you, I've always known you as Chaps. May I still call you that, Chaps? Yes, absolutely. Chaps is my favorite nickname among friends. Uh, Rob, you have moved on to new endeavors with the Dietrich Bonhoeffer Institute, tdbi.org is your website. What is your mission? Yeah, you're right. After, uh, well, about a 30 year run, uh, that culminated just recently, uh, 25 of those years in Washington, D.C., bringing the word of God to bear on the hearts and minds of those who make public policy. And that was the context when I stood with you and you were bravely as a Navy chaplain praying in Jesus' name in front of the gates to the White House. Bravo for that. Uh, it's still inspiring to me, chaps. But, uh, you know, after 25 years on Capitol Hill, working with top level uh, government officials uh, elected and appointed in all three branches of government, I came to kind of reassess applying political solutions to uh, moral and ethical dilemmas. And I read uh, again, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the heroic World War II era Lutheran pastor, moral philosopher, Christian ethicist, of course, we know him as a martyr, gave his life uh, in opposing Adolf Hitler and Nazism in Germany, was executed at age 39 uh, by orders of Hitler himself, uh, hanged at Flossenburg concentration camp, but not until he had left us with 10,000 pages of some of the finest work on Christian ethics available. And after rereading Bonhoeffer and taking a spiritual pilgrimage in his footsteps, literally from the place where he was born to the place he was hanged, uh, I reassessed my own calling. And the mission of the Dietrich Bonhoeffer Institute is to apply Bonhoeffer's insights on Christian ethics to the exigencies of our own day. And uh, we're doing that uh, with a cohort of fellows, young emerging leaders, with pastors, other religious leaders. Uh, ours is an ethical and moral treatment rather than a social and political one. Now, Rob, you've written a new book. It's called Costly Grace. And uh, take us through maybe some ideas from the table of contents. You yourself uh, detail your journey in having been a Christian, even Republican activist in the past to being, uh, I guess, an independent or even uh, you know, liberty leaning moderate when it comes to politics. What is Costly Grace really about? Yeah, thanks for asking, chaps. Uh, costly Grace was a term coined by Bonhoeffer and he used it to describe uh, the opposite of the church's problem in Germany, which was uh, a kind of um, sort of spiritual perfectionism where Christians in Germany during his day believed that uh, so long as you kind of kept to all the rituals and traditions and customs of Christianity, uh, that all would be well. And the state uh, would kind of take care of itself and the church would take care of itself. What Bonhoeffer said was, uh, in, with costly grace, every part of our life is tested by the claims of Christ, primarily in the Sermon on the Mount. So when we talk about the Beatitudes, blessed are the peacemakers, blessed are the poor in spirit, uh, blessed are those who mourn, 
blessed are those who thirst after righteousness and so on. These, these virtues uh, that Christ espoused and of course lived uh, in his own humanity as much as his divinity, that every single part of our lives is tested by this. Every decision we make, every judgment call, our, especially our treatment of others, of the other person, uh, other groups, uh, people from family to friends to strangers, how we uh, treat others, all of this is of a, of a piece, of a whole. And it does in fact cost us everything to follow Christ, to emulate Christ, to, if you will, mimic Christ uh, in our attitudes, in our actions, uh, in our inner life as well as our outer life. And I looked at my own life and I realized um, I wasn't making the grade. Uh, I had been an ordained minister for 35 years. I was a chaplain by that time, following in your footsteps, a uh, <laughs> civilian chaplain though, uh, not military. On Capitol Hill, I was ministering to presidents, to heads, uh, leaders of Congress, to uh, the justices of the Supreme Court. But my heart was not in the right place. And, and Bunhofer's treatment of costly grace helped me to come to grips with that and uh, come to terms with it. And I underwent what I call my th third conversion. I outlined three conversions in the book, and that's kind of the framework of it. But the ultimate conversion was back to the uh, principles espoused by Christ in the Sermon on the Mount. Amen to that. Let's take a short break. When we come back, I'll ask Rob Shank about Costly Grace, that's the title of the book, and how it pertains to recent events in the news after this. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Do you ever pray and sometimes you feel like your prayers are hitting the ceiling and they don't get to God or maybe you don't get the result that you hoped for? I'm Dr. Chaps and I wanna make available to you a new resource, a four part video Bible teaching series on how to pray effective prayers. Did you know God has given us instructions in the Bible? For example, in 1 Timothy 2, there are four different Greek words for four different kinds of prayers, supplication, petition, intercession, and thanksgiving. If you don't understand the way God teaches us to pray, then we cannot expect the result for which we hope. I'm asking you to get this important Bible video teaching series on DVD for a suggested donation of only $30. Call us right now at 866-Obey-God Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D, or visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org, and get this important video resource for your family. Call us right now. I'm Dr. Chaps. You know, some people are worried that we're losing our country, but they ask, how can we take a stand? We have produced now these two effective resources for you, a DVD video series and a book. Yours for a suggested donation of just $50, and we will offer you four videos on this disc to teach you how to become an effective Christian activist. For example, how did I send five million petitions to Congress? How did we organize and change bad laws or policies in 13 states? How did I run and win a seat in the Colorado legislature? We will also offer you this 30 day prayer manual, how to liberate the world in 30 days. They're both yours for a suggested donation of just $50. Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org, or write to the address on your screen, or better yet, pick up the phone and call us at 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. You can learn the easy steps to take back your country. Call us today. He is the intersection of church and state. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps for one last segment with Dr. Rob Shank, longtime friend and author of Costly Grace, available wherever books are sold. Uh, Rob, you learn so much by walking in the footsteps of Dietrich Bonhoeffer and recent events in the news, including the synagogue shooting in California. Uh, this is now the one year anniversary of the Santa Fe High School shooting in Texas have caused you to reassess your understanding of the role 
as it should be, the, the ethical role that Christians play with guns. Uh, we shouldn't play with guns, I'm not saying that. I'm saying <laughs> we should have a different outlook. What is your uh, understanding evolved to? Yeah, uh, you know, at one time I was kind of uh, pretty much an unqualified uh, supporter of uh, unfettered Second Amendment rights. In other words, no limits. Uh, we set our own limits on that. When I started treating this question of gun ownership and use for defensive or offensive purposes, mind you, I think hunting and sportsmanship is in a completely different category. But once you point a weapon, a lethal weapon at another human being, I think it implicates very serious moral and ethical questions, including the very uh, uncomfortable question uh, of whether it is always God's will for me to survive a violent confrontation. You know, the scripture says, prefer one another as better, uh, prefer the other rather, uh, as better than yourself, prefer the another, the other person, if you will. You take second position, never first position. Uh, first position actually only belongs to one, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, so I always take second position uh, in the scheme of things, including even with an enemy, because the scripture says we are to love our enemies. That's a very hard thing to grasp uh, and what it means. And I don't, I don't mean to suggest that it is never right to defend oneself. And certainly I wouldn't make that argument when it comes to our loved ones or innocent others. And I'm not an anti-gun guy. A lot of people say that I am. I am not. I think there is a place for lethal firepower. But when I was trained, and by the way, I was I was uh, trained by wow. a U.S. Marine Corps firearms instructor, very professional, and he said, as soon as you take the weapon to your body, you must be prepared to kill and kill in an instant, <coughs> even someone you know, because if you're not willing to kill in that instant, then the gun will likely be taken from you in a violent struggle and used to kill you and go on to kill others. So you actually become part of the problem rather than the solution. He said, you must assure me that you can kill and kill in an instant of time. That has very serious moral implications for so the Rob, Christian. So Rob, as a 20 as a year veteran myself, as a life member of the NRA, as a you know captain of my high school rifle team, uh, I've got to disagree with you a little bit. Uh, just on the Christian, understanding of how Jesus taught the use of swords. For example, um, he wasn't leading an armed rebellion against the Romans. He would never have called, in fact, he said he could have called up down angels to fight against the Romans instead. But he, there was a time when he said to his disciples, uh, sell your shirt, sell your tunic and buy a sword. And, and the disciples said, do we have, well, look, we have two swords here. Is that enough to defend all 12 of us? And he said, yeah, that's enough for self-defense reasons, he wasn't for total disarmament. Do you disagree? I don't, uh, I agree with you. Uh, and thanks for bringing up that point. What I do say is that Jesus was obviously for limitations on lethal firepower and regulation, if you will. He said, that's enough, that's enough, you got enough. And if you look at Imperial Rome at that time, first of all, it was hostile towards Christians there wasn't really much law enforcement. Uh, you, you really couldn't find a cop on the beat, didn't exist. You had Roman legion, uh, legionnaires, soldiers who were there simply to carry out the will of the emperor and sometimes in very violent, very uh, mercurial, uh, unpredictable ways. So there was really no law enforcement structure. And because this question has so many moral and ethical implications to it, and, and I would argue even spiritual ones, it's one of the reasons we limit this kind of firepower to highly regulated, highly rehearsed individuals who are professionals, such as yourself, uh, and who are held highly accountable for their actions. Because, you know, you don't get to revisit uh, a mortal 
shot. Uh, you, you mortally wound somebody, you, you can't come back and say, you know, I did that wrong. Right. Let's try that again. Can't well, something, I, I'm gonna let you go, but something I think you and I agree on is that we should uh, have quick responses from police. We should have, uh, you know, the government certainly has a role in defending our nation. Uh, and people do have second amendment rights, even if we disagree, it's in the constitution. Uh, and we want everybody to be safe and we condemn any vigilante violence by these shooters, either at the synagogue or, or school shootings. I mean, it's horrific violence. We just want people to have first responders who are capable of protecting children and innocent victims. Rob, I'll give you the last word and mention your website. Yeah, sure. Well, again, these are not easy questions to answer, but we should ask them and ask them constantly and regularly of ourselves. We should ask of them in prayer, in reading of scripture, in public discourse. And just as we are now, we should do it in a civil and congenial and thoughtful way. So I really appreciate that, chaps. Thanks very much. And you can find out more about what I'm up to at tdbi.org. Stands for the Dietrich Bonhoeffer Institute.org, tdbi.org. And I'd love to continue the conversation, chaps, because uh, I miss you. All right, we love you, Rob, and of course your brother and everybody at the, you're at the TDBI Institute. I'm out of time, but our website is PrayInJesusName.org. Again, PrayInJesusName.org. Please donate, sign up as a recurring pledge sponsor, or if you need prayer, pick up the phone, call us. Operators are standing by to pray with you at 866-Obey-God. We'll see you next time. I'm Dr. Chaps, I have two exciting announcements. For those of you who found us maybe one day a week, did you know we're on five days a week with in-depth analysis and Christian news reporting and we pray the news. Where else are you gonna see that? Here's the exciting news. We're now on Apple TV. We're on five days a week on this exciting new streaming platform, Apple TV. Maybe you've already found us on Roku or Amazon Fire, but Apple TV, look for PIJN News in the spirituality category. And here's my other breaking news. Did you know we're also on podcast? Well, what's a podcast? Well, you can listen to us five days a week on audio, maybe when you're working out at the gym or driving in your car. You can watch the video on your smartphone. Visit iTunes and look for PIJN News. We're also on 10 on-demand platforms. Visit PrayInJesusName.org to find them all. And did I mention it's absolutely free? Other people charge a fee, but ours is free. Subscribe today to PIJN News. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.